Good afternoon, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes? All right. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Jennifer Manukin, and I'm the dean of UCLA Law School. And I'm really tremendously happy to see everyone here for this exceptional conference we're having today on international human rights. I thought that our morning sessions were fascinating, sometimes disturbing, but so far it's been an important engagement, I think, and an excellent set of conversations that has already covered a lot of ground and this afternoon promises even more. In addition, today is an important day for the law school and especially for our faculty and students who work in the area of human rights and international law. We've long had a strong commitment to human rights work through scholarship, through teaching, and through policy engagement. I'm very proud of what my colleagues and our students have been doing. I'm also proud that many of our alumni have worked in and have even launched international organizations to address human rights concerns. But the study of human rights here at UCLA and the impact our work is going to be able to have is about to change dramatically and for the better. Today, I am proud, excited, and frankly, a little overwhelmed to announce a truly visionary $20 million gift to launch the Promise Institute for Human Rights at UCLA School of Law. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, it's, it's very exciting news. This gift was spearheaded by Dr. Eric Israelian, from whom we'll hear in just a few minutes. Now this is the largest gift that UCLA Law School has ever received to create and launch an institute. And I know it's the beginning of something truly inspirational. This gift will be partly funded by proceeds from The Promise, a film that opens in theaters this coming Friday. Eric Israelian co-produced this movie, adding that credit to his many other roles, including being a member of the faculty of the David Geffen School of Medicine here at UCLA. The Promise is a feature film set during the Armenian Genocide, which is too little known and understood. In a moment, my colleague Asla Bali and Eric will both talk a little bit more about this and about the Armenian Genocide, the lessons we must learn from it, and about the creation of the Promise Institute. From my perspective, bringing attention to this human rights tragedy is extremely important. And that's one reason that I very much look forward to hearing this afternoon later from our keynote speaker at today's conference, Jeffrey Robertson, who represented Armenia before the European Court of Human Rights and has written extensively about the Armenian Genocide. Shining a light on what happened in the Armenian Genocide and what we can learn from that tragedy was a passion of the late Kirk, 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 Kirk Kirkorian, an extraordinarily successful businessman and visionary philanthropist here in Los Angeles. Eric was a friend and ally to Mr. Kirkorian, and it's a tribute to Eric's commitment and creativity that this beautiful film is about to debut. I very much encourage all of you to go see it, and not only because part of its proceeds will benefit the Promise Institute here at the law school. Eric has done much more than help create a beautiful film, or for that matter, an important film. He is using this film to make a lasting, and positive impact on the world. The film company Survival Pictures is dedicating all proceeds from the film to support efforts to protect and defend human rights around the world. And we at UCLA Law School and at UCLA are so honored to be a part of that. This transformative gift to create the Promise Institute for Human Rights at UCLA Law will put our law school and this university at the forefront of human rights education and advocacy. 
It will create and thicken the connections with a variety of kinds of human rights work already taking place across the UCLA campus. It will allow us to train the next generation of human rights leaders to perform groundbreaking research, to host pivotal events and conferences, and so much more. This gift will permit UCLA Law School and UCLA as a whole to, to be an even more important hub for this critical set of issues. And it gives us the chance to truly make a difference. And so for us, and for me, the promise is much more than a film. It is a tool for peace and justice, for education and advocacy. It is the beginning of a long-lasting partnership and a promise for the future. I now like to turn things over to my colleague, Asla Bali. Asla is a professor here at the law school, and she's also currently the executive director of the UCLA Center for Near Eastern Studies. Last month, she was named to UCLA Chancellor Jean Block's Advisory Council on Immigration, which will examine the shifts, the impact that shifts in US immigration policy may have on the UCLA community. Asla is a phenomenal scholar, an incredible teacher, a remarkable institutional citizen, and an even more remarkable person. I'm also extraordinarily pleased to announce that she will also be the inaugural faculty director of the Promise Institute for Human Rights here at the law school. Asla Bali. Thank you so much. I have been looking forward to this day, to this conference, for the months that we've been organizing it. But I knew that it was going to fall on April 17th. And I've also been looking forward to, and I should say dreading, a previous date, April 16th, which was the date on which Turkey held a referendum, uh, a referendum which tragically resulted in a decision that may well signal the end of a near century long experiment in democracy in that country. Not only is that a tragedy, of course, for the citizens of the country, but it also damages any prospect for reconciliation with the country's past or reversal of its current record of human rights violations. I am so proud to be part of a faculty at the UCLA Law School that will help build the Human Rights Institute, the Promise Institute, that will be developed based on this incredibly generous gift. Training the next generation of human rights lawyers is essential to addressing human rights violations, insisting on accountability, resisting impunity, and ensuring awareness of atrocities as they occur, and to keeping a record to be reflected in the history books that we now write so that the kind of enforced unlearning that I myself experienced may no longer be possible in the world that we live in. I look forward to building an institute that will realize these goals, together with my colleagues here at UCLA and the International and Comparative Law Program, the support of our, of our dean, and the incredible vision that has brought this tremendous gift to UCLA. So thank you so much for taking a moment to hear this. Thank you, Asla, for that powerful set of remarks. Your experience and your perspective are key to what we're going to be able to achieve here with this Promise Institute. I now have the great pleasure of getting to introduce Dr. Eric Israelian. As I mentioned earlier, Eric is the lead producer on the film The Promise. He also has a day job where he's co-chief of, of the Division of Digestive Diseases at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Most importantly, Eric is someone who has shown tireless leadership in improving the lives of others through tremendous hard work, philanthropy, and a determination to make a difference. It has truly been one of the great pleasures of my time thus far as Dean, to have the chance to collaborate and get to know Eric, and to chart the course for making UCLA Law School and this, this campus an unmatched center for work in human rights, law, and policy. It's been really a tremendous pleasure to get to, to think with Eric about what we might be able to do here, to get to know him, and to call him a friend. Eric, the podium is yours. Welcome and thank you so much.
Thank you very much to Dean Manukin and the entire team at the School of Law. Uh, it's a tremendous honor for me to be here with all of you. Uh, I think that today's conference is a perfect example of what UCLA stands for. You've brought together some of the most uh, respected speakers and scholars in the realm of human rights, and they've convened in this public university and uh, have an opportunity to interact with students and faculty in an exchange of ideas, which is, is really heartwarming for me. Um, I, I think the, the film for us is, is just the beginning. You know, I think for many people, the Armenian genocide, unfortunately, is not well known, as uh, Asla uh, mentioned, and for very specific reasons. For 102 years, there's been a systematic denial campaign very similar to the systematic campaign of um, atrocities that led to the, the definition of genocide um, for what happened to the Armenian people. So for us, uh, one of the things that we often talk about is the fact that the genocide does not define Armenians. It is one dark chapter of our past, but we want to move into the future. And moving into the future means having education, an institution of higher learning like UCLA, a respected international university and a public university is a perfect place to have an institute of, for human rights. And it, it's all due to the generosity and vision of Kirk Kerkorian. The film wouldn't exist without him. The institute wouldn't exist without him. Um, he wanted people to know about the history, but also to move forward. And we hope that by um, moving out of the darkness that is the Armenian genocide, we can move to the future and, and really lead through education, research, advocacy, and, um, and scholarship in the realm of human rights. And UCLA is the perfect home for that. And I think for, for me as a, not only a Bruin, but as an Armenian, I think having such an institute in a public institution is important because uh, for many people at UCLA, they're the first in their families to go to college. And um, you know, this country was founded um, on the, the drive and the perseverance of immigrants and refugees. And uh, it gives me a lot of joy knowing that such an institute will help those people who don't have access to legal advice or people who have um, a desire to want to study what's happening in the world today in the realm of human rights. So, you know, we, we obviously, I'm going to put in a plug for the promise for, um, for Friday because we are, thanks to Mr. Krikorian's generosity, donating all of the proceeds to charitable organizations, including UCLA. This is just a, a very visible opportunity for us to do so in the context of what um, the university stands for. And I'm honored that this evening, Chancellor Block will address people as well. And um, I think leaders from around campus realize that this is just the beginning of what we can do together. Um, we hope that the Institute serves as a hub for human rights activity, not just on campus, for all the different schools, such as public health and, and public policy and uh, medicine, but also to serve as a hub on, in the United States and, and certainly on the West Coast. So um, again, we appreciate your support. We appreciate you supporting the School of Law and definitely appreciate you supporting UCLA. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Asla. Thank you to the late Kirk Kerkorian. Thank you to Survival Pictures. Thank you to all of you for being here today. Uh, I am so excited to see what we're going to be able to do and the way we're going to both be able to continue to shed light on, on the past, but also to help uh, create a better future with attention to human rights in so many different ways and to scholarship, research, teaching, and engagement that hopefully will mean somewhat less suffering down the road. Thank you all for being part of it. Enjoy your lunch. We will convene again at 2 o'clock. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>